I think for me, the key, the key part um, that I wanted to do differently on this bike was general, I mean, you know, I could be corrected on this, but my, my understanding is, is that the general motorcycle aerodynamics is concentrated around the front of the bike. The centre of pressure. Uh, uh, and the aerodynamic effort in trying to reduce drag is generally, is generally on the front 50% of the yeah. motorcycle. Yeah. After that, after once you've got past the rider, the, the flow is gone. And, it's all uh, a mess. The seat, then generally, there's a lot of detachment. You've got a, a lot of low pressure sat behind the rider, and then at that point, your any surfaces behind the rider really have, have lost any kind of effect on overall performance. Um, so you know what you find on modern superbikes and things is very small tail tail sections and things like that, which may be there more for aesthetics yes, than yeah. any performance advantage. Whereas when we designed this bike, I was absolutely adamant that we would chase the aerodynamic performance, not only through the ducts, but on the external features of the bike, from the second that the air was broken by the front of the hugger, all the way to the second, the, the last millimetre that the air left the bike at the rear. That's the whole point of an aerodynamic study, isn't it? But yeah. as you said, we didn't want just a streamliner. The challenge was to make it a conventional motorcycle, a semi-streamliner. You have to see the rider. You have to see his components from the side. And that's part of the FIA rules, FIM rules, the seat height. We couldn't go beyond a certain height because, as you say, for aerodynamics, you might want a big tail. We've got our trump card, though, of the duct itself. Yeah, I think uh, what we end up with, really, when we cut the bike through its section, through its centre point. We end up with, um, I don't know how you would best describe it, but in its side view, you end up with a, an aerodynamic wing wing form, yeah. which runs across the top of the motorcycle. It's, um, it, 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 that wing form is the wing form that houses the upper torso of the rider and the helmet. And it comes from the, the, the tip of the nose of the bike. It travels through the duct and out to the rear seat unit and you end up with a perfect wing form which runs front to back from the bike. That wing form, as it rotates around the side of the duct, moves into a separate aerodynamic shape which houses the forearms and the lower limbs. So now you're running into um, the sides of the bike and you have a, a, a wing form on either side which houses um, those lower limbs. Yeah, so we had our little tail pieces at the back there for where the back of the heels go in. Yeah. We've obviously got the Venturi. And, and of course, then in the, in the lower area, the things that we can't move or change their place are the wheels. You know, the front and rear wheels, they are a part of the frontal area of the bike that you can't remove. Um, I don't know whether you would want to go down on wheel diameter, but then if you're doing land speed, you'd go up pretty radically on wheel speed. Yes. <laughs> That's right. not something that you'd want to and do. And again, conventionality was in the back of your mind. You didn't want to change too much. We no, wanted yeah. to be able to use OEM style wheels, tires, brakes. Yeah. I know we've gone custom on the front with the hub center steering, but on the rear, you don't want anything unconventional there. We've got enough radical stuff on the bike package itself. Yeah, it's, it's quite an interesting one because what we've ended up with is all of the powertrain sat in the frontal area of the front and rear wheels. Yeah. Then we've got the, the rider raised to a conventional seat height that sits in an aerodynamic uh, wing cross-sectional area and this radial wing that sits around the duct. And, and that is an incredibly aerodynamically efficient shape. Um, sitting on top of the powertrain. You know, the argument would be that you just get rid of the ducts and and take the rider down and sit the rider directly on the powertrain. But that's a GP um, bike then, and that's not, there's yeah. nothing new there. No, no, the, I, I think then that is a specific, a specific bike which is then designed solely for land speed racing and has no application to the rest of the world. No. You know, what we've got here is we've got a rider sat in a conventional position with a conventional seat height. So therefore, with modification, this concept, by lowering the feet slightly, you have got the rider in the conventional position as something like a modern superbike. That was the challenge, to have a conventional modern superbike, but with the duck through the middle. 
and that that application doesn't just apply to a land speed record bike. We could be a super bike. It could be any other powered two-wheeler. 